Hello, this is Faith at House Rod Homestead. Um, I'm out here on an unseasonably warm December day in Colorado with my coffee I'll be sipping as we talk to go over something that happens to be heavy on my mind this time of year usually, and I've been meaning to make a video about it in case there's anyone out there who needs to hear this or be validated in this way, and that is dealing with the holidays when you're estranged from your family. <laughs> And I want to preface this by saying, because I know there's a contingent of uh, people out there who think that if you are speaking about family estrangements in anything other than regrets, that you are actively promoting um, dissolving healthy families and cutting people off from their families for no good reason, and that is not what I'm here to do. If you love your family and you get along well with your family, and you're happy to go home for the holidays, then please do that. I mean, that's, that's the dream. Um, what I'm speaking to here is the folks who are, not even to convince folks who are on the fence, but just to speak to the folks who are dreading going home already, who are already estranged from their families, who are, you know, at, at that point of realizing that you would rather be anywhere but home for the holidays. This, this isn't to drive wedges, this isn't to condemn anyone, this isn't to call everyone's family toxic, because it's not. Sometimes people are just emotionally immature, or have their own baggage, or they're just incompatible, and that's valid reason enough. So that, that's just the, the disclaimer there. Um, so hopefully this reaches people who... Um, can get something out of it in that respect. I'm just gonna ramble here about my experience. I've been estranged from my family, uh, my mom's side of the family, for I think, believe this is my sixth Christmas without them, and I tried for years before that to get out. I mean, there, there was a slow withdrawal of having to work, quote-unquote, on Christmas and I couldn't come over, or um, bringing other friends as a buffer, or sneaking out early to go to a partner's family's um, dessert or something like that. So from from that perspective, I can say that when I finally cut my family off, it had been a long time coming, and I just realized that I would rather be anywhere but there, uh, where the I only heard from them when there was a guilt trip and there was a command performance to go, and I, I just, I had not gotten anything out of it in years, if ever. Um... <laughs> That's our rooster back there. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to give you some uh, chicken porn back there. Um, but... <laughs> yes, thank you. So, when I say that it has been a struggle almost every holiday since then, a, a lot of people would, especially those who are wildly anti estrangements would say, oh, that means you regret it. And I absolutely do not. Cutting my family off was the best decision I made in my adult life. Um, that has enabled so much growth and healing and things I never would have dreamed I would have in my life. And I do not regret it. But that doesn't mean I don't grieve. Um, especially around the holidays. Thanksgiving in particular hits me hard for whatever reason. Um, the first year that I had cut my family off. The first Thanksgiving, I wasn't coming home for sure. Um, I was depressed about it. Not not just not going home, but just depressed in general. And what I told myself at that time was, if you're unhappy and you've made your whole family unhappy, then what the hell are you doing? Like, there, there's this imperative I felt to be over the moon happy all the time to justify the pain I put my family in. Because when you're enmeshed like that, you're taught that any pain the family is in is our pain. It's your fault, that kind of thing. Like It's amazing the double standards you have where the problems are your fault, but um, the, the baggage is everyone's. Uh, so that was rough. I, I was thankful to have um, supportive in-laws. My husband was very supportive about that. But he, he reminded me this year when I was having another Thanksgiving breakdown that this is a trend. This is a spiral I have, um, a recovery spiral, where I still don't regret it at all. Um, but every year, another flavor of grief comes up to process. 
And I think that's not talked about enough in The Family Estrangement. It's not immediately... It, it can be an immediate relief, but what you're doing is you're trading an old known form of suck for a new form of suck that is preferable and opens more doors for you. So it is not in any way without suck. It is just suck you chose instead of suck that was foisted on you. So the suck this year was even five years in feeling like merely a guest or an imposition in my in-laws house. My in-laws are lovely. Like this is not on them at all. But I just had this meltdown over I didn't have time or impetus to bake and I thought like well if I'm not bringing something then why even go like what am I good for because you know family in my mind would take you as you are but if you're a guest somewhere you have to earn your keep almost and so that's something I, I wrestled with this year um, and it's a little bit of a different flavor every year like that first year um, the, the, I think the first holiday when you're estranged, they, there's almost this imperative to be happy, and the people around you might even reinforce that. Like, there's a lot of pity. <laughs> there's a lot of, oh, oh, join us, you know, don't be alone. And I think I kind of wish in that first year I'd let myself be alone. I'd let myself grieve and feel sorry for myself and pout, and I think hindsight's twenty twenty, you know, but I, I think I would have... Um, not had as much later years of recovery spiral guilt trips on myself to deal with if I had just let myself grieve that first year instead of going along with what everybody else wanted. Um, so I, I, I don't want to offer that as prescriptive advice, but I think there is benefits to... Um, sorry, sorry I'm, like, I'm not in good light right now. Let me just adjust that. I think there is benefits to letting yourself grieve and heal and process and not trying to insist on a happy holiday season for the benefit of the comfort of everyone around you. Um, there were times when I just wanted to not go and not be pitied and not, you know, it might have just been projection, but I just didn't want to deal with that. And I, I wish I'd given myself that. So consider this permission, I guess, if you need and you, you want to kind of have that grief by yourself and not celebrate the holiday that you're experiencing in estrangement for the first time, I think that's fine. I think that's healthy. Um, and that gives you an opportunity to decide what that holiday means to you of your own accord and not the expectations you have to keep up with. By the way, this is my favorite mug. I love this mug. The lady who makes them just retired, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is getting these mugs are like it's like getting concert tickets. Like she made a limited edition of them and you had to hop online and get them. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um but after that, um that first season, I tried to do a lot of found family, you know, redeciding what the holidays mean to me, building my own traditions, that kind of thing. And that works to an extent. Um there's there's definitely things I've kept and, and left behind according to what I feel like doing. Um, I, I really don't decorate for the holidays much anymore. Um, I hadn't for a couple of years. It just didn't feel like something that anyone was getting anything out of, including me. Um, we go up to my in-laws for Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve because um, my mother-in-law is ger uh, German. So that's how we um, celebrate that. And then every once in a while, my husband will cook a, a goose for Christmas Day. It'll just be us at home. Um, and that's fine. That's uh, more his traditions than mine. Um, this year, I was really feeling, of all things, um, some sadness, I guess, over not having family recipes. Um, not having family traditions around the holidays and around cooking, because that was... Um, I, I consider myself kind of raised by Martha Stewart. Uh, my, my mother's side of the family didn't really cook, and I'm donor-conceived, so I never met my father's side of the family. And cooking was a chore for them. Um, my mother had a couple things she could she could execute food, like she fed us, but like it was not with any kind of zeal or enthusiasm. Uh, my grandmother refused to cook on principle. And so we just never really had any recipes in the house. Like, for several years, when I was a teen, I cooked... Thanksgiving Christmas dinner like several courses by myself just to 
have that control, I think, and have something to hide behind in that house. Um, and to bring cooking with joy to my family. And that was received to an extent, but I don't know. I've, I've, it hit me hard this year that I didn't have that food heritage that I see other people have. Um, and I've... Some people shared their family's recipes with me, and that's, that's kind of just a bummer. <laughs> I, I kind of wish I had something like that. Um, I have one macaroni recipe from my great-grandmother that got bastardized by my mother into, you know, the bare minimum execution kind of thing. And then I've kind of tried to judge it back up, make it my own. Um, so it's, it's something like a family recipe, but I never met her. I never got hers. I only got, like, the sad approximation of it. So I don't... That, that's the closest thing I have, is what I'm trying to say. Um... I did find some recipes independently that I'm trying to make my own. I'm, I'm really trying to have a, a repertoire of off-book recipes that I make every year that are a tradition for my household. Even my household is just me and my husband. And establish that for myself. But people talk about um, establishing your own traditions like they're a substitute. And they're, they're not. Um, I think it's still healthy to grieve that you didn't get the family and the traditions and the rituals that other people did, even if you're building your own. Um, so th that's that's kind of where I am with it. I had a whole list this year of like just simple little Christmas flavored things that I thought would be fun to do. Like I, I put up the German Christmas stars my gran uh, my mother-in-law made us um, and things like that. It's, it's still, it doesn't feel like my traditions, it doesn't feel like my family's traditions so much as my husband including me and his, which is still, that's, that's its own clusterfuck, just feeling like you're a charity case because someone's sharing something with you that you don't have. So that, that's just something I have to get over, I guess, but um, I, I'm trying to figure out where I was going with that. We are doing this year, um, this is new for us, um, an orphan Christmas, so on Christmas Day we I threw out an open invitation to anyone who doesn't have family or um, doesn't want to be with their family. And that's the kind of thing I, I wish I had that first year when, you know, I was estranged and I wanted just anywhere else to go. And that wasn't as well received. And th this is where, you know, I, I got into some meta emotion with myself because it wasn't, no one really took us up on it. And on the one hand, that's good. That means people are happy with their families, and that's that's the goal, right? You know, that's what, the I, whole I, the whole point is for everyone to enjoy going where they're going and the people they're with. And if you already have people like that, then that's awesome. But at the same time, um, I've been in and out of like a, a rejection sensitivity flare, and especially when my hospitality or my cooking are rejected, I, I take that hard. Um, that's a thing I'm working on, but I'm, I'm still glad to be able to keep an open door in case anyone needs it. I, I'm, I'm going to put the blast out Christmas Eve and Christmas Day like, hey, if you decide you don't want to deal with your family anymore, you can come here kind of thing. I wish I'd had that. And no, no strings attached, no anything. Just, we have food, we have games, you know, you take it or leave it kind of thing. And I'm, I'm glad to be at a place now where I can kind of offer that. Um, I have, I think, some insight into how this experience goes to offer some of what I wish I had. Um, and it's it goes back to that needing to be relevant kind of thing that I talked about in my last video. I don't... I, I need to not need to be relevant to people in these times and still be available. I think that's what good family does. Um, and the, where you get into that enmeshment and the bad family is when you need to be needed so much that you don't give anyone a choice as to how to take you or leave you. So that, that's, that's where I am with that. I think when you're dealing with these flavors of estrangement, and I'm hoping that this isn't a huge contingent of my audience that has, is dealing with this, but just in case, um, However you feel about it is appropriate. It doesn't mean that you made a mistake. Um, 
that first holiday after an initial cutoff, I think, is the hardest one to stay strong through. Because if you're grieving, it's easy to feel like that's regret. And it might not be. So I, if, if anyone's in that situation, I'd encourage you to surround yourself with found family if you have it. Um, you might need to like hide your phone from yourself. I've had to do that. Um, especially if someone's blowing it up trying to suck you back in. Because the even if you do regret it, the holidays is not the time to make a clear and level-headed decision about that. That That is when the heartstrings get pulled the strongest. You're, you're not going to make a, a self-loving, self-respecting decision when everyone's tugging at you, including all of society, that it's Christmas, everyone should be together. So this, this is permission encouragement to even if you are having second thoughts about a cutoff save it for after the holidays when you can think a little bit more clearly stay strong in your initial decision through that first couple months i'd say because it that i think our culture and the enmeshments family system culture relies on holidays and to reinforce that enmeshment um, you know, the, the cultural narrative of everyone should be together on Christmas, um, you only have your one family, all of our holiday movies reinforce that, you know, pulling your head out of your ass and waking up to your family kind of thing. Um, and that's not right for everybody, necessarily. Um, so, that's another thing, too. It's, it's easy to say, surround yourself with found family and, you know, a support system. Not everyone has a support system. I didn't for several years. Or my support system ended up being of a similar ilk to the family I cut off. And, you know, that's that doesn't lend itself to healthy dynamics either. But... It's a nice thing to... Um, it's, an, it's a nice sentiment, I think. It's not always feasible. Um, it's a good idea, I think, if you're trying to build a found family to find a third place of some kind. Um, if you can, like, it, it can be a hobby group or something like that. Hell, I mean, I'm, I, I have, there's no shame in going to a dive bar, like, and just talking up strangers who are, might be in a similar situation. Um, but I, I don't think we can take for granted that everyone just has extra people they can surround themselves with. Um, for several years, I did Christmas for my animals. I made little stockings for the cats, I bought them presents, we opened presents on Christmas morning, and that was my... Christmas when I was alone and that was still better than Christmas at home by a long shot but you have to kind of just find what if anything of the holidays is for you still irrespective of what anyone else wants from you um, or expects from you like I like to bake seasonal things I like to put up a tiny bit of decorations I like to look at Christmas lights that is the extent of celebration I care to do anymore. I don't really do presents. I don't do the command performance present thing. Uh, I'll do whatever my in-laws family is doing. But other than that, I don't need it to be a celebration. Some people love the shit out of Christmas and want to do the whole thing just without their family. And that's, that's valid too. Some people might want to do nothing. And that's also valid. Like, it's not... You, you get to have your own say for the first time in your life about what the holidays are to you, and that's something to celebrate in your own time. Like, if, if you don't feel like celebrating this year, don't. Don't do shit. Watch, watch, listen to sad music, watch bummer movies if you want, binge on ice cream. This is, this is the time to lick your wounds from an estrangement, I think. So, that, that, that was just the ramble on, I get it. If you're in that situation, you're not alone by any stretch of the imagination. I know it's taboo to talk about. Um, if, if anyone needs moral support in the comments, I am a huge proponent of trauma dumping. <laughs> I, I live for that shit. So if, if, if y'all have anything you want to vent, um, I'm here for whatever that's worth. Um, I hope everyone has a time. Not a, doesn't have to be a merry time. Just have a time. Have the time you're going to have. Uh, do it for you. Do it for the cycle you're breaking um, and stay strong with not getting sucked back into something you left on purpose. So hope that did something for somebody. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.